Now that I've just said much, don't know what to say. I'm upside down, can't figure that one out. Uh, but it's been that kind of day, and I seem to be suffering from the machinations of the ghost in the machine, as one piece of electronic equipment after the other has uh, succumbed and failed. I've been reduced to rather absurd things, trying to figure out what exactly is going on, and uh, why has the machinery all decided to take a break and uh, essentially stop working? It doesn't make sense. These things aren't supposed to happen that way, right? Uh, well, there is a concept of the ghost in the machine. It's a famous book, and it was the name of a police album named after that book. What is the ghost in the machine? Uh, well, you might say the ghost in the machine is all the aspirations of the people that went before you that worked with those machines. And so it depends on what kind of machinery you're dealing with here, but uh, uh, for the most part, uh, I'd say uh, you're probably dealing with uh, mechanical systems and who knows what you're making. Uh, but when you pass on and you know, someone else takes that job, you literally become the ghost in the machine. The machine that once occupied your time uh, gave you your sustenance and your sucker, as it were, is now uh, doing something else for somebody else. It is not yours anymore. <laughs> so it's an upside-down world for everyone concerned. Is that understood? I don't think so, but we'll proceed on in any case uh, with other concepts that are related to this. And I don't really know of any, I'm just spitballing here. And you know what that means? Uh, that means a BS artist is at work. And you shouldn't listen to BS artists. I'm not constantly, why am I identifying myself as such? Because at the moment I'm doing nothing but spitballing you. I'm just making this up as I go. That's not very difficult. Uh, because, you know, if you're spitballing, you're doing anything in the world that you wish to do. And you're sending out a ball. It's uh, going to be a tricky one uh, for the opposition to deal with. And that's the nature of the game that you're playing. Now, being obverse and upside down, it's a tricky business. You could do that in camera if you wished, and uh, you'd get some sort of result, I dare say. Uh, but you cannot just willy-nilly assign to it some sort of specific value. Uh, you really have to do the thing upside down with the concept of upside downness center in your mind. That is to say, it really has to be a central feature of what you're doing and you have to focus uh, not exclusively on the upside downness of your world or the upside downness of your video at the moment, uh, but rather the um, a general right side upness of things in a general sense and how it's going at the moment. And we can't say that for sure because we don't know. We really don't know. Uh, we've entered into discussions with the favorite lady in the UK again, and that's nice. But it's a tricky conversation. Uh, the one thing that we are certain of, this pretty lady and I, is that we have a lot in common. In one instance, we have an awful lot in common. And that would be the decision to re be chaste for the sake of chastity, because you really don't want to engage in casual relationships, ever. So you don't pursue them, you don't allow them to happen, and you stay out of the game for an awfully long time. For a fundamental part of your life, let's say. And that is the case with me. Uh, no contact with anyone. Uh, not necessarily for any particular reason, it's just, you know, no one in my life that uh, has motivated me to do anything other than be the person that I am. And the person that I am really doesn't want to engage. Well, not anymore. You know, when I was younger, I'm sure I did, but uh, I quickly lost interest in that, turning my attentions to other things. I mean, there are men who pursue conquests as a sport. I'm not one of them. I wouldn't do that. Uh, for one thing, a conquest is an absurd idea for me. I'm always looking for cooperation rather than conquest. It's a much better way to go, in my view. The uh, other thing is, of course, we all have considerations and things that we have to deal with. And 
people that we're interacting with that uh, well we don't want to disappoint and the other thing is we um, we definitely uh, want to give that person a notion that we're not really what we seem and that you know we there's more than meets the eye and one of the things that should hopefully be apparent is that you know you're not at all what you would be on your calendar record right you're not that 62 year old person for some reason you just don't cross you don't transition as that you're something else you don't know what because no one's telling you when you're sort of dealing in a vacuum chamber and the only feedback you get is from yourself that's not going to help you much in trying to determine what your state is at the moment and uh, what you should do about it now i entered into a depression some weeks ago and i knew that i had transitioned into that state uh, because i could feel it you know, happening and uh, the one thing that does overtake you in the moment when you enter depression is an overriding sense of sorrow as much as there is an overriding sense of joy in mania. There's an overriding sense of joy, sorrow in depression and there's no accounting for it. It's not a sorrow in your life. It's just a general sense of sorrow. And that's one of the odd things about it. Because, you know, it's one thing to have motivations when you're in a euthymic state or mania and to act on them and to get results that are predictable. But you don't get that in depression. You don't receive that feedback. You have a sense of things. And yes, you may be slipping into a dark place. Some people do. Uh, but I never have. Uh, there's no dark place for me to occupy. I'm always surrounded by light. And the darkness doesn't show. So that's fine if you're me, and you can live a life and do things as you wish, willy-nilly. And I have that luxury, and I've had it for a long time. But it's another thing if you have dependents, if you have family, and so on. You've got to be responsible to them as well, and so you can't uh, just exercise your particular uh, preferences uh, in terms of your choices in life, but you have to be cognizant of the fact that uh, your involvement in the world is uh, part and parcel with the larger involvement that you may have with this social fabric in general. Right? Your, your job, your career, your motivations, uh, the people that you work with, the people that you love, right? the people in your household. All of those people are entitled to have the best version of you that is available and you have to make that best version of you accessible to them. How do you go about being the best version of you? I think you have to kind of figure that out. You have to decide what the best version of you looks like and then pursue that. It may be that um, you don't have the best version of you, that the version of you that is apparent is the only one that there is, and that you don't have the flexibility and the creative mind to do other things. Right? You are just simply what you are. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, being what you are. It's probably the person that your wife fell in love with. Is that person the what you are person? Right? So you can pursue that and do what you will, as it were. Uh, but you have to be cognizant of the fact that you yourself need to identify with that person, that uh, uh, persona that you are creating and you're putting out there to be cognizant of that person because it's possibly an artificial individual that is an ideal version of what you would like to be. Which can be tricky because you've got to maintain this ideal, I would say, and uh, you're going to have other factors that are going to come into play, like real life. And that's why sometimes it's best to just go with the punches, be the person that you are, for good or for bad, and um, Seek happiness. I don't know what else is there to say, but seek happiness. And that can take many forms. But generally speaking, a happy person is a peaceful person.